Tonight, how severe shall the penalty for homosexuals be in Ghana? The question dividing parliament today as it proceeds with consideration of the anti-gay bill. You are looking at a minimum of five years and a maximum of 25 years, which appear to be too high-handed if you were also looking at restorative. If you were looking at only misdemeanor, that also appeared to be too lenient not to act as a deterrent. And that is why we suggested a second degree felony. We have details as Communications Minister Eslo Usue Kufo warns Parliament against inadvertent criminalization of the use of sex toys by homosexual couples, but heterosexual couples. Because sexual intercourse between a man and an inanimate object or a woman and an inanimate object would necessarily include sexual intercourse with all manner of aids that couples use to enhance the sexual experience. This is Top Story with Evans Mensah. And Top Story is always brought to you by Vodafone. Question, how severe should the penalty be for homosexuals in Ghana? Tonight, that is the question dividing Parliament as the House continues its consideration of the controversial anti-gay bill. Parliament could not agree on the appropriate punishment for LGBTQ plus persons. The anti-gay bill criminalizes sex between persons of the same sex between man or woman and animal or object and proposes a punishment of up to five years, between three and five years. But the Constitutional and Legal Affairs Committee recommended a jail term of up to three years without recommending a minimum sentence. Chairman of the committee explains the rationale behind the proposal, which has become pretty controversial on the floor of parliament today. Mr. Speaker, I hold the original appeal that was filed in this house. Even though we have we uh, run to the wall under clauses 19 to 23, this is what the proponents have as part of the memorandum to the bill. Clauses 19 to 23 deal with the protection and support for victims, accused, and other persons. These provisions are included as a recognition of the distinction between lifestyle activists and persons who engage in the acts prohibited by the bill as a result of social, cultural, financial, medical, psychological, or bi biological reasons. This is in recognition that as minorities, these persons need the support, protection, and love of the majority to help them overcome their vulnerabilities and to give them options so they may be helped. It's only this portion I want to read. But Mr. Speaker, in course of the consideration, and this is what I already informed members that we needed to iron out this. And most of the religious bodies were supporting the fact that they would give people who are prepared to go through reforms the opportunity to go through. If we make a strict law that if you are found guilty or you practice in this, you don't have an option. Mr. Speaker, we don't have a community service. That would have been severer than giving the person a custodial sentence because the society will look down upon you. But to caution you or to give you a day's imprisonment or uh, one month imprisonment, if we leave it to the discretion of the judge, they are also members of the society. They are learned and depending on the circumstances. And that's why I am comfortable if we give the upper limit without saying that the person must be imprisoned as the minimum requirement. Parliamentary correspondent Kweku Asante joins me right now. Kweku, what's the issue with the proposal we just had articulate by, articulated by the chairman of the committee? Evan, so the committee and the sponsors agree that if you are found to have had sex with a man, if you're a man, a woman with a woman, or any object, 
you should go to jail for three years. The real disagreement on the floor now is whether or not there should be minimum sentencing. In several laws, there are the ceiling and there are minimum. For instance, in certain laws, the, court, the law would say you can be jailed up to the maximum of 25 years or a minimum of five years. The committee did not recommend any minimum threshold when it comes to sentencing people for LGBTQ activities. And the rationale, as the chairman lays out, is the fact that it is for the restorative value. So a judge should be able to look at the case, the peculiarities of the case, and decide that you should go in for a day or two hours or three hours just to send a certain signal. The committee pulled this forth, but the, the majority of them, so that's not a good. He insists that there should be some minimum threshold. Although Sam George, who is a co-sponsor of this bill, actually agrees to a certain extent that the committee's recommendation should stand. Now, with the engagement we have and the, and the intentment not to be only punitive, but restorative, the question arose that if you use the first degree felony, which is what is in 104, you are looking at a minimum of five years and a maximum of 25 years, which appear to be too high-handed if you were also looking at restorative. If you were looking at only misdemeanor, that also appeared to be too lenient not to act as a deterrent. And that is why we suggested a second degree felony, which is not in 104, which then sits in between the misdemeanor and the first degree. And that's why we suggested that the maximum should be five years, uh, three years. But I agree with the position of the majority leader that in that case, we should then get an advice on what the minimum penalty of 750 units con uh, 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 is, is concurrent with. Is it three months or six months? So that we have a lower limit also for custodial sentence. Is it a minimum we, of... We, we don't need it because there's already a law on that. We don't need it. There's an existing law on the equivalence of penalty units. So that will apply. So the lower limit question is what he's proposing there. I have that too. What about the speaker's position on this? The speaker of parliament initially was not convinced by the sponsors and the committee's argument. So initially he was strictly opposed to that and argued in favor of putting the lower limit in, in, in the sentencing guidelines. But as the committee, the argument went back and forth. He said that he was sort of convinced. But because the House was unable to come to a decision, he is now going to refer this conflict to what is called in Parliament the draft person, the legislative drafting unit of the House, to consider and make a proposal as to whether or not there should be a limit or not. And then when the bill gets to the third reading, it will come back to the floor for a decision. If it's the pleasure of the House, I would defer putting the question on that and leave it to the draft person to capture it. The position now is that Usually, before we go through the third reading, they would have compiled our decisions, brought it to us, we'll go through to make sure that our decisions are really captured before we do the third reading. And so there should be no fear. With this, we defer question on it, and we refer it to the draft person for the appropriate rendition. And then there was this very interesting intervention by the communications minister. What was it about? Yes. In fact, early on, before the communication minister would walk into parliament, there had been an amendment to add that if you had sex or purport to have sex with an object or marry an object, you were committing an offense in law, which, which you could be punished for. And so when she came in later and the conversation was advancing, and then she sort of heard that that is some of the position that the House had taken, she was on her feet to argue that not just gay couples or LGBTQ persons use sex toys and other what she calls AIDS to have sex. And that even heterosexual couples, that is sex between a man and a woman, sometimes they call in the aid of sex toys to enhance the sexual experience for the man and the woman, the wife and the husband. And she wants parliament to advertise their mind to the fact that they could inadvertently be criminalizing heterosexual couples using sex toys and sex AIDS. And I think we raised this due when the committee was considering it, that the proposed amendment in 3C may create unintended consequences because sexual intercourse between a man and an inanimate object 
or a woman and an inanimate object would necessarily include sexual intercourse with all manner of aids that couples use to enhance the sexual experience. And I'm not sure if that's what the intention of this bill is. It would include, it would necessarily include sex toys and other aids that couples, heterosexual couples also use to enhance the sexual experience. So if that is what the House intends, then we have to be clear in our minds that we may be criminalizing activity which may not necessarily be limited to only those um, LGBTQI community that the target of this bill is. But it may also be targeting straight couples who use sex enhancement tools to enhance their sexual experience. So we need to be mindful of what the unintended consequences of C, 3C, could be. And I propose that 3C be deleted from this um, amendment. Thank you. Let's bring in Roxanne Nelson. Uh, Dafia Mekbo is a Constitutional Legal Affairs uh, Committee member, also uh, one of the sponsors of this bill. Uh, thank you, sir, for your time here on Top Story. So where do you stand on this question of this lower limit? Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, I am in support of the lower limit because, you see, the, le the legislation we are considering, and that will lead to an enactment, there are certain aspects of the conduct we need to prescribe that may not necessarily have to lead to a custodial sentence because regarding the minimum that became an issue of tango on the floor it means the court wouldn't have a discretion to even caution someone and and discharge him after the person has been convicted but the intent of this legislation is not to necessarily put people in prison. Uh, there will be circumstances where during prosecution or after a successful prosecution and, convict and conviction, the court may be minded depending on the peculiarity of the fact of the case and the applicable law to, to nearly caution the person to go and be of some good conduct. Not, not involving the conduct that brought the person to court. So we want to, we want a legislation where there can be upper ceiling, but the lower ceiling will be left at the discretion of the judge to exercise after a successful prosecution. But where's the question of deterrence then comes up? I mean, that then leaves room for, you know, people not to feel that they've been, you know, the sanctions are severe enough to, to prevent others from doing the same. That's the whole purpose of this, isn't it? Yes. The, the essence of deterrence, the, the issue of deterrence that you raised also came up. But you see, the essence of legislation is not always to um, imprison. Sometimes deterrence can be achieved with the experience that the person must have gone through during prosecution. Attending court, and standing in the dock, being questioned, answering questions, and all that, will be an experience that can constitute a deterrent. And based on the peculiarity of the case, the, the, the peculiar set of facts of the case that, that would have brought you to court, the court will be minded to caution. You, you understand? But if you if you tie the hands of the judge and set the minimum sentencing regime, then in situations where the judge would have been minded to court him, because he's tied, his hands are tied by legislation, the court will mandatorily have to impose a custodial sentence, even if it's a minimum one. When indeed, if there were no minimum mandatory requirement in law, the court would have cautioned you after conviction. And we want that 
to be in the law. We don't want a situation where always the court will mandatorily will have to convict somebody. Because the essence of this legislation is to ensure reform in matters that we seek to pro- prescribe. I mean, as we speak now, the speaker did not take the decision on this, deferred it. What does that yes. mean exactly? I mean, to go back to the drafting. Uh, what it means is that um, there were two provisions that appear to contain similar provisions on this matter. So it was agreed that we we'll defer to the draft person to tidy the provisions up so that it will, it will reflect the true intent of the house to dealing with this matter and re-advertise those those newly crafted provisions for our consideration tomorrow or the day after tomorrow and it is a practice that we engage in all the time uh, in in parliament during consideration stage where a provision in a bill a craft is crafted in such a way that it's not reflecting the true intent of the house after deliberations. The draft persons are called upon to to redraft it to reflect the intent of the house and resubmit. And but considering that there are different views on this matter, what 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 would that draft say? That the lower limit have a lower limit or still keep the the three years without the minimum sentence? The, you see the three years minimum and the 24 the, in fact the existing penal provision regarding the offenses contained in section 104 of act 29 is what says the minimum of five years and a maximum of 25 years that is the unnatural canal knowledge but the the conduct that the current legislation is looking at is more expansive than on natural canonical. So in, in in that regard, you must also provide a penal regime that will have a much lower threshold in terms of uh, the, the sentencing regime as well as the not going beyond the upper limit as imposed in uh, Section 104 of Act 29. So some of us are for the fact that let's set an upper ceiling but the lower ceiling, the court should have the discretion to impose a caution. For instance, if the if the the facts of the case uh, is the, the one that the court should caution the person and discharge, because we should be able to anticipate that in the law and provide for it, because it will happen. And then there was a question about how do you interpret, for example, the 750 units, which obviously the law spells out what that is. Uh, no, it's, it's not an interpretation. It's the, to state it in an equivalence because uh, it was completely missing. So the majority leader was of, of the opinion that once we are able to indicate the penal, the penal unit applicable, we should, we should be able to give the equivalent in custodial sentence as is done in all other system legislation, so that, for instance, if the court is minded to impose a fine, then the applicable penal unit, a a penalty unit will apply. So if the penalty unit is calculated and translated into, because 12 penalty units, one penalty unit is equivalent to 12 CDs. So if, for instance, 720 penalty units is awarded against you, that would translate into a, a, a sum of money. Now, the the the, the standard legislation, the drafting style is that when you are unable to pay this uh, penalty, uh, 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 penal sum, then in lieu of that, you have to, a, a custodial sentence will have to be imposed. And that must be stated in the equivalent of years. So it could be five years, in lieu of that, five years imprisonment. And that imprisonment we must come with three, either, either one of three descriptions. Imprisonment in hard labor or without hard labor. And just out of curiosity, because you mentioned yeah. on natural kind of knowledge, 
uh, mm. before this bill was even mooted, anytime the issue about homosexuality comes up, everybody will refer to natural knowledge. When this bill is passed, what happens to that act? Well, of natural kind of knowledge, which, which, which exists already, has a very severe uh, prescribed penalty for it. When, yes, when, when yes, your bill it is passed, it still remains? It will remain? still exist in the law. <laughs> it's not be outlawed. Uh, the fact that it's a provision in a 29 co- contains this does not detract from the fact that another law cannot make provision for it, es- especially when they do not contradict each other. So we have a lot of laws where uh, a pina, pina, uh, or offenses that prescribe corruption uh, in a lot of laws. And I can cite at 29, the Office of the Special Prosecutor Act, the Yoko Act, all of them, they contain provisions that forbid the offense of uh, um, corruption and, and, and corruptible practices. So it doesn't detract from the fact that another law cannot, make, cannot provide for it. What timelines are you working with now, considering that this particular decision has been deferred? I, I should say that the bill is progressing uh, quite fast. It's not a heavy bill. Uh, it's, it's a bill that contains about 32 provisions. So uh, today we've worked up to about um, clause 7. Um, between clause 1 and clause 7 contains some of the most contentious provisions. Then once we have uh, overcome them, I'm sure the rest will be, the rest are not contentious. And the advertised amendments, as I saw them today, are also not contentious. They are the amendments that are to enhance the, 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 the contents of the bill. So they will not be contested. So I'm sure if we go back to it tomorrow, we will make further progress. And God willing, by the end of next week, we may finish consideration. And it will be up to uh, the business committee to prioritize it for the third reading. And then it could be passed. One of the major criticisms against this bill, and we've had the international community use that quite often, is that this is a bill that is seeking to imprison people for expressing a sexual preference. Here you are talking about, well, you don't want a lower limit because you want to give the judge room not to imprison necessarily, but also simply caution. It, it, back of your heads, are you thinking about the international ramifications and that may be influencing this very soft approach to this? When this started off as a very severe penalty? No, I think I think it's rather the international communities, or I don't know which international communities these are anyway. Those people who are raising issues regarding the bill, perhaps having taken their time to read the bill carefully and see exactly what we seek to do. Nobody is intending to imprison anybody with this bill. It's a conduct that we think that we should check as a people, we, as a sovereign people. And I think that uh, from that perspective, they should appreciate what we are doing. I wouldn't sit here and be anticipating that a judge will have the power to caution people to desist from a certain conduct prescribed by this law if if I'm not minded to. But I know exactly what we intend to do. It's not about imprisoning people at all. It is to let people appreciate the fact that this is conduct that we we do not we 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 do not want. So if you engage in it uh, the courts will look at the facts and the law and 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 make pronouncement on its merits. They want to make provisions in such a way that the court can give you the opportunity to go and amend your ways. Uh, there are a lot of uh, offenses in our laws where yeah. the courts are giving the opportunity yeah. or the discretion to caution people when they start them after they are convicted of the offense. And that's exactly what I think we should, we should have in this legislation. Um, so that tomorrow, when the court opportunity, they can exercise that. It's that simple. I'm not doing this, or I'm not advocating for this, in response to the concerns raised by the international community. We rather want them to support us to do this as a sovereign people.
I mean, an interesting point indeed that uh, you don't mind what if a judge just simply gives a caution to somebody who has been found guilty on this subject, considering you know how contentious this subject is. Uh, I'm, I'm grateful um, that's uh, Roxing Nelson Dafiamek for there. But let's bring in the the uh, chief advocates in this, and they've been uh, campaigning for this bill to be passed because they abhor the act of homosexuality. Adam Sinanu is a chairperson of the Advocates for Christ, Ghana. Adam, thanks for your time here on Top Story. You've had um, Rocks and Nelson FM. It was on the floor today, a debate around um, the severity of the sanctions. It's uh, an upper limit of three years, but give the judge the room if the judge simply wants to caution somebody found guilty to do so, not necessarily imprisoning all the time. Do you agree with that concept, the concept of cautioning individuals found guilty of homosexuality if this law is passed and not necessarily imprisoned? Well, yeah, I think that that's a, a fair way to go, um, especially if they would uh, have a follow-up just in case the person is cautioned uh, more than once, then you needed to then, as it were, step up the uh, level of sanction. But it is fair because the the concept is not about um, just penalizing people for the sake of it. It's simply to uh, ensure that certain things are not promoted. So I don't think that anybody should have a, a problem if a judge thinks that the merits of the case are such that they just want to caution the individual or individuals as the case may be. So it wasn't as if you guys were bloodthirsty, looking for a lot of people to, to throw in jail. <laughs> That's never the case. Actually, the truth of the matter is uh, I like to use the example of uh, uh, having a, a kid who is a bedwetter and you need to encourage the person to stop bedwetting. It's a practice that obviously we all frown, frown, frown on. Um, the idea is not to then try and find ways of making the person feel pain. Uh, that will not get the end result. So absolutely not. Never was the case that we simply want to throw people into jail. Thank you very much, Adam Senandu, the advocates for Christ. Uh, what about you? What do you make of it? This is one of those issues that the overwhelming majority of Ghanaians have a view on. Uh, now you've heard the MP say, well, they're saying they don't always want imprisonment for those found guilty on this matter. Uh, they will tolerate a simple caution. Give me your thoughts.